Welcome to The World According To on IMTS Plus. I'm Travis Egan. Today we're here with the president and COO of Okuma America, Jim King. We're also here with Mitch Free, the CEO of Ziki, very good customer of Okuma's. And we're gonna be talking together about what we see as the opportunities and the challenges in manufacturing today. First off, let's talk a little bit about your background. Let's tell your story, if you will. I was born in a small town in Michigan called Sterling Heights. My dad had a shop that did assembly machines for the automotive industry, welding assembly machines. So I've been around manufacturing my since I was, I, got, I think I was in a drafting room at age six. But what really got me hooked on manufacturing is going to work in the automotive industry to pay for my college. I tell people, that when you go into a job shop and you smell the coolant, it rewires your synapses, I believe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because you can never, ever get away from it. It pulls you back in. And so when the opportunity to come to Coom America, that opportunity, when it arose, I just grabbed and ran as hard as I could with it because the people are phenomenal. Our mission statement is we passionately pursue a customer for life. And in that, the customer is the center of our universe. And, and for me, that's one of the reasons why we're here. Mitch, can you tell us your story? Well, I, I was born in the Atlanta, Georgia area. Thought I wanted to be an, an engineer, a mechanical engineer, and probably work in the automotive. And I went to work at a, at a shop called uh, Dixie Numerics in, in Lake City, Georgia. And the owner of the company came over to me and said, a lot of the older guys around here, they're not interested in learning computers. They think this CNC stuff is a fad. Um, do you want to learn? So I said, absolutely. And it turned out I, I had a good talent for it. I was recruited to Northwest Airlines. They wanted to be able to set up a facility with CNC machining, the ability to do reverse engineering, and I set up a good shop that could do exactly that. Another one of those fateful recruiter calls I said, uh, hey, would you like to be uh, in the CAD CAM software business? So I quit the job at the airline, bought a laptop, inherited 2,000 customers, and I start really traveling around getting to know them. And I noticed my CAD customers were talking to my CAM customers about a drawing. That was a eureka moment for me. I went home and I wrote the first version of what became MFG.com. And at about 2005, I get a phone call and this, this guy says, Hello, I work for Jeff Bezos and he would love to meet you. We ended up doing a deal. I had turned 50 years old. I went to the doctor. Well, you've got, you've got colon cancer. I took about a year while I was recovering. And I was thinking back to the days when I was making parts and how happy I was. And that manufacturing is such a, for me, it brings me joy. And so in 2014, I, I started Ziki. Let's get started by looking a little bit more broadly at manufacturing technology. Well, in, in, our, in our business at Akuma, we are looking at the digital twin as being part of a, a really critical part of our long-term strategy. We announced this year a new control platform called the P500, and in that has a digital twin as part of the core of it so that you can do a real time understanding what's happening on the machine and create not a virtual twin, but a true uh, digital twin. On our machine, we can capture about 4,000 points of information and data. And so if you've got an AI, you've got a digital twin, now you're taking all this data and information that's coming off the machine in real time and be able to make really predictive uh, activities for the machine tool. Looking at some other manufacturing technologies. Additive manufacturing, I think particularly on the metals side, has significant implications in the machining industry. Right? Now, the expanse for design, if that opens up, is really fascinating. As, as Jim mentioned, I, you know, AI is playing and will play a big part, but I think the theme of all of that we're talking about is acceleration. Speed is, is a huge element in, in the market today. So in our discussions, automation has come up quite a bit. Roughly 80% of our business is job shops. 
I came into the industry 14 years ago and we couldn't get a job shop to even look at automating. You know, I'm gonna say COVID and then all the reshoring that came back started to really impact the industry and we didn't have workers to take over the jobs that were coming back from, from overseas. More and more job shops are looking at how do I, how do I get the machines running more? Mm -hmm. How do I increase my efficiencies? And so we started an automation division. I think automation for job shops is critical to be able to fill that skills gap. But when I think automation, I think more like our LT2000s have bar feeders, right? Bar feeding is automation. It is. Right? And then I think about, you know, tool setters, probing, you know, checking for tool breakage, right? Th those are automation, I think, every job shop should have today. Take care of all the things that you have on, under your control inside that machine. Mm -hmm. And it, once you do that, then start looking at the high-end automation. So we want to shift the focus towards emerging markets. Let, let's start with the EV marketplace. I believe that is a disruptive technology today. I think for many, of us in the, in the machine tool business where you're going from thousands of, of parts that are machined to hundreds, um, that really does create a change in our thinking. But I also, I believe that the automotive industry is moving away from some of the manufacturing technologies that they have today to produce parts and use more standard machines that are very flexible. And I see it as an opportunity. Yeah, yeah. The rate, the rate of innovation, the rate, rate of revision is fast because they're figuring it out still. And, and as I think about aerospace and defense, I'm seeing tolerances get tighter and tighter and tighter, and geometries get more and more complex. Yeah, I agree with you, and that that's the hallmark of our company is yeah. is trying to create a general purpose machine, but have the ability to hold tight accuracies. Mm -hmm. And so I think. In this early stage of EV, we're going to see offshoots for alternative energy that are going to come out and create even more opportunity. I think there is a shift going on from OEM to job shop, and I've seen that with a number of our customers that have basically shut down their internal shops and outsourced it. If you look at how much has been reshored from Canada down to Mexico, these companies offshored it for a reason. And as that work comes back, they don't have the desire nor they have the facilities to put capital in place. And so what we've seen is the job shops have been extremely busy. The innovation that I get to see among our customers and the things that they're designing and we are so honored to be a part of, it just blows my mind and, and makes me think, we're neophytes as far as what can be done and what can be developed. It's fascinating the applications that are out there. When I travel around to see our customers, I go into their shops and they start with a billet or a brown bar stock. And when it comes out of the machine, it's a piece of functional artwork and it is beautiful. The world, according to Jim King, is speed. The speed of technology and the rate of change that we're seeing in our market and in our industries today is almost supersonic. We have technologies that are changing the way people in the Americas and the world will operate in the future. The world, according to Mitch Free, is this is an incredible time to be in manufacturing. I think this is more exciting than the great industrial revolution because the rate of change is huge right now. It's the opportunity to create wealth, to provide great jobs, take care of our country, and do great things for our communities. And that's it for this episode of The World According To. Our thanks to Mitch Free of Ziki Manufacturing for welcoming us to his facility in Georgia, and especially to Jim King of Akuma America for making this happen. We'll see you on the next episode of The World According To on IMTS+. Plus.